The general sense is while there's been a lot of negative over the past two years, particularly with people like Lance Armstrong, Hansi Cronier, Tiger Woods, Oscar Pistorius, the list goes on and on, doesn't it? There is immense risk in attaching your brand either to a sports person or a sports team. But be that as it may, the upside that we learnt from this breakfast today far outweighs the negative as far as this is concerned. The whole essence of the relationship, though, is that you have to have a clear, concise, well-padded mitigation strategy. In other words, you have to know exactly what can go wrong and what kind of plan you're going to implement should something go wrong. But having said that, once that is in place, the immediate benefit is enormous. One of the uh, statistics that struck me this morning was that there is an immediate bump for a brand, not only in brand value, but also in share price the moment that deal is inked with a celebrity or the team. Uh, all too often the call goes out from a marketing director or a brand manager is, here's my product, find me someone to match it. What you've got to make, and that's wrong, obviously, I mean, it's not going to work that way. What you've got to do is you've got to audit the brand intrinsics of your own brand. In other words, what do you stand for? What is your tonality? What are you trying to achieve? Uh, what's the language that you're going to use? Uh, how are you perceived in the market? You've got to take that brand fit and you've got to go and find the person who articulates and represents those same brand ideals. You're not always going to get a perfect fit, but unless you run through that exercise, it isn't going to work. I think the most fascinating piece of trivia that came out of this morning's breakfast was the uh, basketball Michael Jordan who hasn't picked up uh, a, a, a basketball in anger, I think for the past 10 years, is still earning something in the region of $80 million a year through uh, brand endorsement of, uh, of a particular shoe brand that Nike makes. What it tells me is that the right choice was made in terms of that person, but uh, perhaps uh, more importantly, you've got to go and find that celebrity who has longevity. And it's also uh, once that person has got the longevity, it's also the way in which that person has, one, managed to reinvent themselves, but two, managed to do something else with their life in order to perpetuate that relationship with the brand. If you can find that, it's the holy grail of brand relationships. Sadly, there are not too many Michael Jordans around. What you've got to do in terms of this is you've got to look for big ideas, something that is going to spark enormous interest. And the one thing that came out of the session this morning was this astonishing relationship with Red Bull and Felix Baumgartner, who was uh, the lunatic that went up in the, uh, in the, in the mini space capsule and, and, and parachuted to Earth. What did it do? There was maximum brand optimization as far as Red Bull is concerned pre, during, and post the event. I mean, the guy was branded up the Kaiba, if you, if you saw the video footage. But second of all, it's the public relations around the sponsorship opportunity that existed. That's the kind of property that's going to work in perpetuity.